So bottom line, we can push closing back. That's fine. Uh, I'm not gonna close on this house and I have no problem just walking away from this deal. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today is a very busy day for us and we've kind of kept something off social media. We are- Having a baby. Mm, no. no. We are purchasing our first investment property out here in Myrtle Beach. Right? Having a baby would be a little bit more expensive. Would it be cheaper to have a baby? And I don't want another one, so okay. not exciting. Anyway, we have a walkthrough. We're gonna hit the gym for a little bit and then we have our closing a little bit later. So kind of excited, investment, first property. investment property. Yeah, this is a big deal. We're like doing big, big- First of many. We're adulting. Mm -hmm. We're adulting. Yes. All right. So let's do a walkthrough. Walk through, gym, gym. Get bigger than I already am, which is, yeah, you have to zoom out a little bit. To we have to go get this. pumped up before the closing. I think we have a video clip, babe. Let's play the video clip of when we first walked through the house with Brandon roughly two months ago. Okay. Cue the clip. Now we're going to do a walkthrough and then head to the gym. So we're just leaving the gym and we're a little bit pissed off. The best way to work out is to have your blood pressure already up through the roof before you even get to the gym. That's the best way to get a pump. That's fitness advice for everybody. <laughs> we didn't even need pre-workout today. <laughs> so we're supposed to have, uh, we we're supposed to have our closing today and go to the lawyer's office uh, in a little bit, but we're pushing all that back. Um, so what blows my mind is when you make a purchase, um, to me, you can never put, and I've said this before to people, is you can never put your heart into a purchase. If you're making an investment for strictly investment purposes or buying something or spending your money on something big, it's like, do not buy with your heart. Uh, I do that with vehicles. Um, we made that mistake before with a car. I almost did well. I didn't make a mistake. I traded a car and I almost wanted to cry when we got rid of it because I loved it so much. That's where I did cry. Yeah. And that's where you don't want to do that. So. <laughs> Um, you've got to learn to make a purchase and not put your heart into it. If you're buying something as a liability or an asset, uh, it's strictly that. You've got to know what you're buying and how you're spending your money and not care what happens. So buying a house, if the seller, let's just take a number, say a seller is selling a house for $250,000. Some people will look at that and say that's an expensive house. Some people say it's not an expensive house. So you, you can interpret it how you want to. But the point is if you sell a house that say it's valued at $250,000, a quarter of a million dollars, People just take it for granted, and I don't think they take the face value of the money of what it's worth, and don't care enough about it. You're a salesman who's trying to sell something to somebody for a quarter of a million dollars, right? Or $500,000 house, half a million dollars. And for you to not care that much about what you're selling, you're not valuing the money. So when you have a seller in our situation who just doesn't care about their property and lets it start to go, uh, I was gonna say to shit, but we probably shouldn't say that. When you let it go bad, I'd have no problem saying then I'm not closing until you fix it. Like you just let it go that bad, you fix it or I won't close. And you've learned your, like let them learn their lesson that you messed up. Like you might lose a sale of $250,000 over being sloppy and lazy. Like some people need that to sink in. So when you buy something like a house, don't buy it with your heart. It's a business decision. You're buying an investment property. Right, and I feel strictly like with business, this, and I have no problem walking away. Mm -hmm. I can find another one and buy another one. It's not the end of the world. And I feel like with this, we definitely did that. We were, um, we looked at the property as a piece of investment. Um, the whole way through, I think we were looking at this as an investment. So I think that we're fully like ready to just walk away if we need to. Yeah, and I wouldn't shed a tear over it whatsoever. Right. The housing we'll market's get insane. One. I there's literally I could find another house tomorrow and put you know, money down on it and it's, it's right. a done deal. But I will say this, a uh, shout out to our, uh, our realtor is, uh, as you guys seen him on the channel. So I'm yeah. in the Sea World video, Brandon yeah. Shaw. So our realtor is a good friend of ours. He's working very hard to get all of this taken care of. Um, and he's a realtor down here in Myrtle beach and works, uh, 
with his sister, um, Jules DeForest for BRG. Mm -hmm. um, that's their real estate company, but I'll put Brandon's info down below. So, you know, I do feel bad. I, I said to Brandon, I was like, I'm not getting mad at you. I just want you to relay my madness to the seller yeah. and let them know how they're messing up. So, um, but big shout out, Brandon's doing a great job. And uh, like I said, we might close on this, we might close on eventually, or we're closing on another house. But regardless, uh, we're gonna use Brandon with whatever we decide to do. Anything you want to add before I just keep rambling? <laughs> no, I think you like hit the nail on the head. Yeah. Um, we're pissed, um, but got not at our our realtors are awesome. Um, the I would definitely say like the realtor for the seller should have been a little bit more like on top of the purchase, uh, on top of the uh, house that he's responsible for being the seller's agent. And the seller, I've never had somebody, or I've never met somebody like care less about something. Like they, you own a piece of property, how do you not maintenance it? Like to me, that's just completely bizarre. We left our house in New Jersey in mint condition. When the people moved in, the pool was clean, like everything, bushes trimmed, it was perfect. So I'm disgusted. Yeah, personally. and even if you don't live in the house, like the house is vacant, so if you're the seller, and you thought you were paying somebody to care for your property and take care of it and maintain it and they just weren't doing it, that's still on you. Yeah. That's still your fault. Like that was a bad decision by you mm -hmm. and you you know, you end up paying the price on it. And that's that's the bottom line. So people would say, like, oh, you said your heart's not in it, but you're getting upset. I'm not upset and I have no problem walking away from a deal. That's how you know your heart's not in it. It's one I'm thing just, to be annoyed at people for being right not good at what they're trying to do. I'm angry at people that are careless and to me the this is careless are. the sellers are careless <sighs> Woosa. so a little heated we just talked to Brandon our real estate agent and we also talked to the attorney and both suggested that we come into the attorney's office and still not necessarily sign the paperwork but could I guess there's a way to like work things out where we may still close today. I'll hear them out. We'll figure out what's going on. AKA, they... we're gonna consult with counsel and just leave it at that. <laughs> so we're gonna. Uh, so what's funny is like, if the seller's agent says something to you like, "Oh, just go close. Don't worry. I guarantee something will be fixed." Uh, always ask somebody. If somebody guarantees you something. Ask if they'll financially back that up. So if somebody says, "I guarantee," oh, I think there's a lawyer here. Uh, I guarantee something's gonna be done. You say, okay, would you sign your commission over to me if you're wrong? And when somebody says like, no, I would never risk that, then they don't even believe their own guarantee. And there's nothing wrong with financially backing a guarantee. So if if you're right, then you're a man of your word and your guarantee was good. And if you're wrong and the guarantee does not come through, then you sign your commission check over to me. And when somebody's not willing to risk something of themselves, then you don't, you don't take their guarantee. So that's where we're at. Never take a guarantee especially when it's coming to a big purchase like this. The more you know. The more you know. The we're more the you wrong, know. Wrong lawyer's office. We're definitely at the wrong lawyer's office. Okay. So we're back at the gym. More fitness. Oh, I'm, there he is. We are back. So we left you with the more you know, and we got things that happen. Right, Chris? Yeah, it's uh, amazing how quick you can get somebody to wake up when they realize they might lose a sale or a deal. Um, so again, we work really well with uh, our real estate agent, Brandon. Uh, we work together and uh, the seller quickly woke up. How you doing? Thanks. We went into closing, um, you know, and we, uh, we had no problem pushing the date back, which is pretty much what we did. I said, I won't close today. They quickly found a landscape company ASAP to show up and started knocking it out. So that should all be done today and uh, we can move forward tomorrow um, as long as everything's done to our standards and uh, and close tomorrow but yeah sometimes you just have to tell somebody you're willing to uh, back out walk away from a deal and have and as long as you honestly can call your own bluffs yeah right? we we'll have no problem just pushing this yeah. back until June 1st and it goes back to like not having an emotional connection to something yeah which I feel like we did a good job of keeping everything not emotional <laughs> we're excited about an investment property but um, looks like everything is going to be fine now. So, congratulations to us. So that's it. House number two. Yeah, done. buddy. Now we're moving on to house number three. Let's do it. All right. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, like and my the channel. video, and my channel too, and Chris's channel too. And we'll see you guys.
next time. Peace out, everybody. Bye.